Good afternoon, welcome to the Automated Home Show. I am so frustrated. It's Sunday and I've got some wins to share with you. I was hoping to make this a good news update because there's some good things going on, but uh, just when I thought I was making progress. No, no, it's, oh my God. Basically my whole, my whole smart home Smart home, which is in its infancy, has been turned upside down. It's been turned on its head and I feel so stupid. I feel so stupid that I don't understand this technology. I don't understand these devices. I don't understand why this is happening. As you'll see when I'm sharing this update, this is certainly not bragging. This is not flattering to me at all. In fact, I'd rather not share this with you because it's frankly quite embarrassing. I'm only sharing it because I hope that... Although I'm sure there are some smart people out there that are going to see this and point and laugh at me and say, oh, what an idiot. You don't understand it. Yeah, you're right. Okay. But I hope that I can help someone that's in my shoes either now or in the future. I hope someone sees this or finds this and they think, okay, great. I'm not the only one struggling with this problem because my suspicion is I'm not the only one. But let me just share with you what has happened, how we got here and where I'm at at the moment, because it's so annoying. All right, so um, I shared about a week ago that I've got this small camera thing that I wanted to get set up in the baby room for baby monitoring. I wasn't able to connect that camera because it required 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and I thought, oh, we don't have that, we only have five gigahertz. Stupid, I know, right? Anyway, more recently, I got another product, Someone sent me a camera and it also requires 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I, we had a back and forth conversation. I said, look, sorry, I, I don't know how to connect to 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. As far as I know, we only have five. They said, it's very easy. And they're right. They said, it's very easy. If you have five, you also have the capability to have 2.4. Just reach out to your ISP. They'll be able to help you with it. And they were absolutely right about that. I contacted our internet service provider here in Malaysia. I wasn't too confident in getting a helpful reply, but to my surprise, I got a fast response from the ISP, very helpful, and yeah, it was a very easy problem to solve, right? I don't need to go into it now, but right now, I've split out the Wi-Fi networks that we have here in our home. Now we have a five gigahertz Wi-Fi network and also a 2.4. I thought that was so easy, job done, fantastic. I thought I'm gonna kick back on this lovely Sunday and I'm going to connect a few devices. I'm going to play around and maybe re, you know, try to reconnect that camera that was meant for the baby's room. Things did not go to plan. This morning, I realized that every device that thought it was connected to the old 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network, I actually changed the name of that network. In the process of setting up and splitting out, having a 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network, I changed the names of both of them. I called it name 5 gigahertz, name 2.4 gigahertz, right? I thought, okay, that's, uh, that, that makes sense, right? Split it out, make it obvious well, which is which. I realized this morning that every device in our home that was previously connected needs to be reconnected. And initially I didn't realize the magnitude of this problem. I thought, oh, no big deal. It's just phones and computers, we can connect those. But then I realized the first thing that actually caught my attention was the temperature and humidity sensor that we have sitting on our dining room table. It's Inkbird product. It has been connected. It has been connected for a long time. And suddenly I looked at it, I'm like, oh, it's disconnected. Oh, no big deal, I'll just reconnect it. And I couldn't do it. I tried, I tried various things. I was in the app, I was looking at it, troubleshooting, reading this help article. I couldn't do it. So that was pretty frustrating. And then I realized that wasn't the only problem. I realized my Muros window and door sensor that I have on the front door here that was in Alexa and in the Muros app, I realized that was offline and I couldn't figure out how to reconnect that as well. I realized my Sonos, my Arc soundbar and my sub Gen 3 are offline as well. So forget spending a lovely, fun Sunday setting up some new devices. But by the way, I've got some cool new stuff here as well. Maybe I'll share that later on or, or maybe not because I'm just so frustrated. But forget that. Forget that. It just turned into, I actually, I actually don't understand this at all. I thought I was making progress. 
I thought I had my smart hub set up. I thought I had Alexa in there with the, with the Alexa skills. I've got voice control for these devices. And now it's just a matter of buying new smart devices and setting up automations. And that's the fun part, right? I thought, oh, this is easy. I understand this. This is fine. I'm making progress. And it feels like two steps forward, four steps back. It feels like I've just lost all of the progress that I've made. And I'm not just back at square one. I'm back at... Now, I don't even know. Like, I feel like right now, um, just in... I need to assess the damage. I need to go through system by system, product by product, and I need to figure out, okay, is this thing still working? Is it still online or is it not? And what I, you know, a quick, a quick sweep through, what I think we have, the, the approximate damage report is Muros door sensor, not connected. Sonos soundbar and sub, not connected. Uh, the Inkbird temperature and humidity sensor, not connected. I haven't even tried to reconnect the camera I got for the baby room or the new camera or these new Akara products, which I went and bought. I picked them up the other day. Fantastic. You know, I was so excited to get this. What is this? A P, P1 motion sensor. I talked about this. And I've got three Akara T1 LED light bulbs. All of these products, all of these devices are going to go in our outdoor lift elevator lobby area that's what I wanted to spend my Sunday doing I did not want to spend my Sunday running around with my hair on fire trying to figure out how to try to reconnect devices to the wi-fi not being able to figure it out feeling stupid feeling like I don't know anything at all which which is obvious that's true okay I know that but it's just so frustrating I would say on a scale of one to ten the frustration rating scale this is like an eight or a nine frustration and now it's not just frustrating, it's causing me anxiety and frankly, paranoia. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even know what this means for the future. Like, it's, it's really, really, uh, it's, it's, yeah, uh, this is not how I wanted to spend my Sunday. So I think, and I could be wrong here, like I'm, I'm honestly gonna have to go device by device and try and figure out how to get them reconnected. But I think I'm gonna have to do factory resets. Like for example, in the Sonos app, I tried to connect it to the Wi-Fi, didn't work. And then I was going through the troubleshooting steps and it looks like if the Sonos products were previously added to a different Wi-Fi network, then you need to factory reset the devices and then try to re-add them. Okay, maybe I'm being a little bit dramatic here. Maybe this is not such a big deal. It just seems very frustrating and very annoying. Is there, is there an alternative? Like instead of doing factory resets, can I, well, I mean, they're added to the other old Wi-Fi network. Can I just like somehow port them over into the new Wi-Fi network? I don't know. I don't know. You know what? I actually, I was so frustrated. I went for a walk earlier today and I thought to myself, I've got an idea that might solve this. I thought when I split out the old Wi-Fi network, which was just five gigahertz, and I created the new 2.4, and I renamed the five to name five gigahertz. And then I named the new one 2.4, um, name 2.4. I thought, what if I just change the name of the five gigahertz Wi-Fi network that I, that I renamed, just change it back to the old name? Because it's, it's still the same base name at the beginning. I just added five gigahertz at the end. I thought, what if I just delete five gigahertz? It's still the same network. Same name, all of these products, all of these devices, they still probably think they're connected to that network. What if I just change the name? I tried that. It doesn't appear to have helped. So I think I am looking down the barrel of factory resets. It's just really, really annoying. So right now I feel like I'm just in the valley of despair. Just when I thought I was starting to make progress, starting to pat myself on the shoulder. This is easy. I understand this. No. Now I've been slapped in the face and not only do I not know the things that I don't know and the things that I don't understand? But now I'm realizing that I also don't understand a whole bunch of other things and I don't even know what they are. So that's, that's the main thing. I'm just so annoyed. Look, like I said, I, I do have some good news to share. It's not all bad news. <laughs> so I've got a few of these new Akara T1 LED light bulbs to go in the elevator lift lobby area with the Akara P1 
motion sensor. Excited to get that going. Probably not going to do it today, to be perfectly honest, because I'm busy. I've got other things to do. We've got a newborn baby in the home. Yeah, but sometime soon, I'm going to get that set up. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, yeah, hopefully going to try and connect both of these cameras, which seem to require 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which is the whole way. This, this, is how, this is how I found myself in this mess. It's like, okay, I need to split out the Wi-Fi at home. I need to have a 2.4 gigahertz network. I created it. I thought that was easy. And then suddenly everything broke. And that's where I'm at the moment. Um, well, we're doing a little bit of a, a stock take, a bit of a damage report today. I noticed that all of my Akara products, they seem to be still online, as does the Homey Pro. So the Homey Pro is still online. In Homey, I can control the Akara T1 LED light bulb that is over at our dining table. I can still control that. I can also still control it with Alexa voice control. That's good. I can see that the water sensor we have at the kitchen sink is still still online, as is the vibration sensor at the dining table, still online. So it seems like Akara products, no problem. It's like they never skipped a beat. Homey, no problem, never skipped a beat. But definitely the Sonos system, the Inkbird temperature humidity sensor, the Muros door sensor. Yeah, I'm just grateful that if this is gonna require a bunch of factory resets and a bunch of like re-adding all of these devices, I'm just grateful that this happened to me now <laughs> and, not, and not six months from now or a year from now. Imagine if instead of having like, I don't know, a handful of smart home devices in here and, you know, five or 10 different brand products and brands in total, imagine if I had 50 or 100. Oh my God. And this, and this happened. Wow. What a, what a disaster that would be. I had no idea that this could happen. I had no idea that this was a risk. Maybe it's not a risk. Maybe I just messed something up because I just don't understand it. I have no idea. But look, like I said, I'm not sharing this so that you can laugh at me and say, hey, look how dumb this guy is, even though you're exactly right about that. I'm sharing this in hopes that in the future, when someone's trying to troubleshoot one of these problems or a very similar problem, they feel like they're not alone. Um, I'm feeling your pain. If, if I'm talking to you in the future, I've not had a good day. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. Just really, really um, disappointing day. Some other good news is we have had some wonderful experiences with the Akara light bulb at the dining table. I love it. it is, I've said before, it's a game changer. I stand by that. I really, really love that product. Hence why I went out and bought three more of them for the outdoor lift elevator lobby area. It's great. I, I enjoy turning it on and off. I enjoy just playing with it. Even when I'm not around, you know, <laughs> the other day, my wife and my mother-in-law were at the dining table. Uh, I was in a different room and just for fun, just for fun. I just, just turned the light on just, just for a few seconds and then turn it back off just because I could, just for fun. And, you know, we had some, um, the water sensor actually saved us at least once, maybe a couple of times. But there was one incident a few nights ago, like 3 a.m., uh, my wife and myself were up taking care of the baby and you know half asleep and the water leak detected automation it went off and it was legit so it actually saved us on that occasion and immediately both my wife and myself we both sprang into action ran over there turned off the water filter that was fantastic I'll confess I've also been tempted to play around with that one as well just for fun you know I thought oh, maybe maybe when my wife's just relaxing somewhere I can just go and drop that water sensor in a little bit of water just for fun to set the whole thing off and watch it jump up and say, oh no, did I forget the water filter? But no, I'm not going to be so mean. I'm not going to do that one. Overall, until this Wi-Fi situation, uh, I've been thoroughly enjoying playing around with my new smart home devices, my new smart home products, and just like taking a baby steps, just one step at a time. Like, okay, I've done these things. What would I like to do next? Next, my next project, as mentioned, is my outside lift lobby, elevator lobby area with a motion sensor and some Akara lights. And then after that, you know, we'll see what comes after that. But that's kind of the way I want to approach it rather than try and do the whole shebang, everything all at once, which sounds overwhelming and crazy. Just take things one step at a time and no rush. I'm looking at this as a marathon, not a sprint. So that's kind of my approach to things. If you have any helpful tips or advice, you know, hit me up. 
marty at automatedhome.com. Otherwise, I'm sorry to be so downbeat. I hope this is the low point. I hope next time I have an update to share. It's a little bit more upbeat. Hopefully, I've fixed some of these problems and we can get back to some good news stories. Otherwise, hope you're having a better Sunday than I am and we'll talk soon.